Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing Blackbird, a title by Onion Games I've been following closely since its announcement until the October 18th release on Switch. I've been stoked to play and have put more than 30 hours into it at this point. So from here on, I'll be explaining just what makes this twisted little shoot 'em up so special. The story begins with a lethargic child that walks into an outside crowd. She's in dire need of care, and there's plenty of people around to help, but no one does. The tragic girl is ignored until she collapses and dies. Then, like a curse on humanity, the little girl transforms into a being of malice. She becomes the fabled Black Bird, a legendary calamity said to bring this world's kingdom to ruin. And that's exactly what you're tasked to do as the player. Take the reins of destruction and annihilate all in your path. This sad plot, the hapless girl that no one bothered to save, is stated to be a parallel in how we treat one another out in public every day. The indie game website posted an interview with mastermind Yoshiro Kimura discussing the idea that people, you and I, walk like robots in the big city. And it's true, the fast-paced nature of our culture has us always absorbed in our own heads and problems, likely to turn a blind eye to others unless we're benefited. Kimura describes this city environment as being like a curse of its own, wherein mass amounts of people can only really work together when disaster strikes. A shooting, an earthquake, the awakened black bird. Kimura questions why we can't cooperate before that happens. The connection and friendship that two people can feel, the bonding that makes us human simply doesn't exist in an everyday crowd. Establishing at least a better relationship with the sea of faces we pass by each day, that's the moral this game proposes. However, humankind cannot learn a thing without physical consequence, and inflicting that is rather fun. So as a collective karmic entity, we must cleanse the earth for a high score. Using our bird powers of what I imagine to be acid spit, bubbling and bursting opponents rack up the points as a battalion attempts to take you down. Like the wacky Million Onion Hotel that came before it, Blackbird is most certainly an arcade experience. However, it too has plenty of story nodes to uncover that keeps players like me invested. And that's crucial for the game's longevity. It's a world with lore to learn about and discuss. Unlocking these eerie cutscenes to learn what happens next makes the game worth revisiting. There's reason to keep practicing more than simply trying to dominate the scoreboard so you'll naturally get good at the game. And why would you want to get good at Blackbird? To start, the visuals are awe-striking. The game looks at first like it might all be sepia-toned, but the color starts bleeding in after the opening world. At first, it's used selectively in a way that really helps the player. Everything important shines in the grimly-hued opidum, Enemy projectiles are bright red for instinctive dodging, and glowing green gems must be collected to evolve. Aesthetics really start to peak in Neo Lumina though, a city so glowing that even its residents have bulbs on their heads. Backlit signs illuminate buildings, and in this time of crisis, circuiting shortages and sirens light up the streets. The world's boss is a fitting killer carnival ride where you shatter colored bulbs and dodge electrical blasts. This fight is a real benefactor to the game's sound quality as well. The lightning rhythmatically shoots to the pace of the background music in the most satisfactory way. In fact, all enemy hordes and movements are synchronized to the OST. Moments like this, and the frantic to serene instrumental drop before the final boss are too memorable to forget. One of my favorite instances of creative sound effects is the very first boss, Balm Balm, a giant hot air balloon. 
With a deflation noise, he releases a barricade of smaller balloons as an attack. But after taking a beating, he pops to reveal a smaller, more buoyant form. In this second stage of the fight, the music's vocals raise in pitch, as if the singer had just inhaled helium. A layer of charm added on to an already funny face-off. But getting back to the gameplay functions, I mentioned earlier the importance of these soul gems dropped by all enemies. They allow the Blackbird to level up to a higher form and have an interesting mechanic attached to them. After defeating any enemy, their gem has to be collected quickly, as it starts bouncing vertically and gets a little smaller every time it hits the ground. The tinier it becomes, the less power it grants, a nice touch that adds loads of strategy. For the biggest gem, you'll have to risk a hit by being close, so knowing exactly what moment your attack will defeat the opponent is the key to success here. And the reward is worth it, because a filled power gauge yields a more advanced form, increasing the size and reach of your projectiles. After enough evolutionary stages, paying mind to how wonderfully creepy they are by the way, a second beak starts to form, allowing attacks from behind. It's especially helpful for boss fights, where you're not always in an ideal situation to be facing them head on. The final form is wonderful too, even though it is delicate, as one hit will have you de-evolve. As this superior creature, homing miniature birds are spit out in place of bubbles to ferociously gnaw on targets. And if they didn't dissipate after feasting, it'd be terrifying to imagine the possibility of them all becoming their own separate black birds. There are three different general power-ups available too. Speed increase, life up, and an extra special attack that allows for different builds each play session. They're found in these prized soup pots the townsfolk can be seen making and the people know it's special because they're quick to guard it with their lives. As a beginner player, I was always quick to increase vitality first as a safety net for the final boss, but then found it best to max out speed as soon as possible when I naturally got better. Bombs can yield crazy point bonuses too, so the order of pickups should be considered to suit your playstyle. But after buffing your little monster to its peak potential and defeating Insanus Maman for the first time, it's revealed that you've actually been playing the game on easy mode and must clear each stage again on a higher difficulty. True Mode's enemy count and their speed ramps up considerably, with new foes and special characters to find. Bosses have extra attacks, and the Insanus hangs in there for one last stand. What really makes it cool though is that certain parts of the world become more developed than they were in normal mode. For example, in Neo Lumina, what was once a boarded up statue in the background is now an accessible stage hazard. Which reminds me of my last point on this game. I spoke briefly about story content, and while it's light in Blackbird, it's still there and told in a pretty clever way. For starters, less obvious than the actual cutscenes are the stages themselves. For simply being a level-based horizontal shooter, there did not have to be a cohesive universe here, but there very much is. Not doing what you're supposed to and simply watching the characters interact with their environment is really interesting. What caught my attention most of all is the interconnectivity, like this train from the third world that could be spotted in the second and fourth. There's also this recurring recycling motif present in every area, which seems harmless at first until you realize these individuals are dumping human body parts for use in the technologically driven aristocratia. The deceased are entirely disrespected too, with one inhabitant sipping wine on a pile of corpses. I'm led to believe this game takes place in a Roman-inspired universe. And here's my evidence. The blackbird is hatched in a town called Opinum, a Latin word referring to settlements in ancient Rome. The farmland level is likely derived from agriculture, and the final world's name comes from the wealthy social class aristocrat. 
My theory then is that this fallen soldier recycling program is built around slave labor. Perhaps an attempt to counter you, the legendary Calamity, building these attack robots with organic parts. The main story, on the other hand, is told chronologically in sets of three micro cutscenes per play session. Which set of three clips shown depends on aspects like how well you did in the first level or what mode you're on. One set of clips, for example, has the girl being tormented by caricatures of the game's bosses, while another leaves the poor child trapped in a birdcage. There's also multiple endings to unlock, changing mainly where her freed spirit will rest. Though there is a final ending granted to the highest of scorers with a milestone of 25 million to crack. There are a total of 8 endings to find, and the 6 I've uncovered so far have all been satisfactory in adding to the bittersweet mystique of it all. However, I am mostly against locked story content behind feats like this if they're part of the main plot. I love the multiple endings, they prolong the game and encourage training for score, but the true end is a major piece to this puzzle when I'd rather it have been an alternate or side story. It was a pat on the back to finally conquer it, but I honestly felt more relieved than anything, which isn't necessarily good game design. After that challenge, the game gives a clue to another, arguably tougher, secret end achieved by not using any bombs or getting hit once. That's a neat idea, but you know that feeling when jumping over a huge gap, that tenseness when clearing the bottomless pit, not fully trusting in your own skill? Make that feeling an ever-present stress trying to dodge this flurry of garbage, knowing you very well might have to take another 20 minutes in getting back to this point. But that's my only real negative towards Blackbird. So do yourself a favor and check this game out. It's frantic fun, easy to pick up on, and with practice you'll have the mechanics mastered. As I said earlier, there's incentive to go back beyond striving for the record. I've improved immensely since starting, and never thought I would beat true mode, but I did with practice. Both modes were a blast to get through, and I can see myself climbing even higher in the ranks with more time. I never scored anything on a video review before, but I'm gonna give Blackbird a 9 out of 10, missing one point only because that 25 million mark is a bit much for the average player that just wants to see all of the plot. It's doable, but it can absolutely be frustrating. Have you played Blackbird? Do you want to now? Let me know in the comments and we can help each other with tips and tricks. I'll give another. Don't forget your hit combo. Maxing it out before shooting targets like these windmills will grant you so, so many more points. Learn how bombs affect score too. I didn't find this out until later. But have fun. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.